me you don't feel all warm and fuzzy when you see that kind of footage. I know that this is my favorite time of year. There's something really beautiful about appreciating the slightly warmer days, chilly nights. It's cozy, but it's still wonderful to be outside, and we just love it. And we do make a lot of s'mores. I don't always make homemade graham crackers. I haven't lost my mind. But if you've got a special occasion, if you really want to just make something really special, they're not difficult to make. I'm going to share with you today, and I think you'll have all the recipe, all the ingredients for the recipe on hand. Perhaps maybe not the whole wheat flour, but it's something you can just run out and get at any regular grocery store. But let me share with you what you need. You'll need all-purpose flour, whole wheat flour, a little cinnamon, baking soda, and some salt. You need a mixture of brown sugar, regular sugar, some honey. You'll need lots of butter that's been softened. This is more than softened. I popped it on the stove while the, warm, while the oven was warming. And you need some vanilla extract. I know, you don't have to tell me, I need to make more. I got all my vanilla beans, so I'm gonna get these steeping tonight. All right, let's get going. Very simple and easy. I'm gonna do this in my standing mixer just because it's really simple. I'm gonna add all the butter. It doesn't matter that half of it is melted. Ideally, you'd want this at room temperature, but this works just fine. And then you're gonna add all of your sweet components along with the vanilla. And I'm telling you, it is that simple. It's really not complicated, but they make your house smell incredible. And they taste so delicious. And I, I've, I've shared a picture uh, or video of this on my Instagram uh, several days ago. Maybe a couple days ago, I can't remember. Um, and a lot of you said, please share the recipe because I'm from the UK, or I'm from whatever, and we can't get our hands on graham crackers. So there you go, now you can make your own. I'm gonna let these mix for a few minutes. I want the mixture to be really nice and fluffy and I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. That looks great. Just make sure you scrape the sides of your bowl. Okay, now we're gonna add in the dry ingredients. Get those in there. Come on. Try not to make a mess. I'm trying. I can't say I'm succeeding, but I am trying. Well, better than the, the, better than what I usually what it usually looks like. I'm gonna get this going. I also forgot to mention you might need just a couple tablespoons of water if it's just a little too crumbly. I'll show you what I mean when it gets there. Don't do this on too high of a speed, otherwise you'll get a flour facial. All right. This is a little bit too dry, so you can add a few tablespoons of water, two to three, or some milk, either way. Um, either works, I've done it with both, and it's exactly the same result. So this is gonna already look so much better. Just let it go until it kind of comes together. That is perfect. That is what you're looking for. Ugh. That is what you are looking for. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to divide this into two discs. Well, pull it together in a disc, which takes no time at all. And then I'm gonna just divide it in half, wrap them in some plastic wrap, and pop them in the fridge for about half an hour to an hour. If you are gonna put it in the fridge any longer than an hour, you're gonna need to let it you stay at room temperature. I'm gonna cut this in half. Uh, let it stay at room temperature for a while before you go ahead and use it, because it's gonna be really, really hard, but it's gonna be perfect, so I'm gonna do that, and I'll be back. All right, so this is one of the discs that was in the fridge for about an hour. Now, I do not want you to panic because if you were to go out, to go out, to go and roll this out on your counter right now, you could, you'll see that, I'll give you an example. It'll fall apart. It's quite a crumbly texture. There's no egg in here or anything. You see that? And you won't be able to pick it up because it's gonna break, but do not panic because you did not do any thing wrong. That's the texture you want because remember, a graham cracker is quite a, well, I would say crunchy, you know what I mean? It's not, a so if you like a soft, chewy cookie, then a graham cracker is not the cookie for you. <laughs> this is a totally different ball game. It's quite like a biscuit-like cookie, but this works out perfectly. So the best way to do this is to roll it out on the parchment paper you're going to bake this on. So, I've been preheated to 350. I've got a large baking sheet. This is a, I can't see, 17.25 by 11 and a half. So you're going to roll this out really thin, okay? You're gonna think it's too thin, but it's not. You're gonna have to just trust me. I have got parchment paper that's cut to about the same size as the baking sheet. You're looking for about, I would say, 15 by 10. So here's what you do. You place, you know, this is half. Remember, we made a big batch of dough. This is just half of it. The other half I'm gonna bake later. 
you put a parchment paper on the top and then I just sort of start to flatten it with my hand and this is what I do to keep the parchment from rolling away. I bring both pieces close to me, right? And then I just kind of lean up against it and it makes it so that the parchment doesn't go anywhere. And you're just gonna patiently roll this out to a big rectangle to form the same size just about of the parchment. That's your guide. Your parchment is your guide. That, my friend, is a beautiful sight. Now, any parts that are just sort of a little bit too big, I always just trim it and then just take the leftovers, gather them up, and then you can do the same thing again with a smaller batch, okay? But I just always like to trim things up a little bit. Now, if you want to be precise to make sure all your little squares are all the same size, get a ruler out. But here's the thing, I feel like if I start getting a ruler out, then I lose what I love about home cooking. <laughs> uh, and I'm just not going to do that. So, I just eyeball it. You want, you know, little squares. So here's what you're going to do, okay? Don't throw any of this out. You're going to gather this and do the same thing with the other batch. So here's what you do. Again, you're making squares, however big you want them. I score quite, almost all the way down, okay? And then I just try to make nice size squares, or however big you want them. Some will be bigger than others. Those are for me. <laughs> then you take um, a fork. Again, you're doing this because you want it to resemble graham crackers. Do you need to do this with a fork? No, but you do need to score them. So I just take a fork and I just sort of pierce all the way down. And they do end up looking just like graham crackers that you would buy. And I'm telling you right now, just you wait until you smell your house and your kitchen. It smells so good, you would not believe it. When I made these the other day, uh, Joe had run out for an errand. And when he walked back in, he was like, what is that smell? Because usually when you're home, you don't really smell it as much unless you're like going outside and you're coming back in. And then friends of ours came over and they were taking <laughs> black coffee and they were dipping these in. They're like, this has got so much flavor. We don't need anything in the coffee. So there's that. Okay, I'm gonna just do this to all of them. Then I'm gonna pop this entire, this entire thing, parchment paper and all, I'm gonna slide it onto my baking sheet. And these are gonna go into your preheated oven at 350 on the center rack for about 18 to 20 minutes or until you can see that the edges, these edges right here, will be a lovely golden brown color. And then I'll show you what to do as soon as they come out of the oven. All right, these are in the oven actually 15 minutes. Really keep an eye uh, because every oven's vary. You can see that this side's beautiful golden brown. As soon as they come out, you're gonna just take your pizza cutter and you're just going to trace right where you score them before you pop them into the oven. If you don't do this, then you're not gonna break up into perfect little squares. And the whole goal here is to make little sandwiches with some of the marshmallow and some chocolate. So you're gonna go ahead and do that. Then you're gonna let them cool completely. And once they're cooled completely, you'll be able to snap them right off. We're gonna, I'm gonna let these cool. I'll make another batch. And then we're gonna go outside and enjoy some delicious s'mores.